Welcome to the Executive Spotlight Q&A, a sponsored light reading audio production. This is Phil Harvey. I'm an editor here at Light Reading. And today's Executive Spotlight features John Madison. He's the CMO and Executive Vice President of Products at Fortinet. We'll be discussing SASE, the Secure Access Service Edge, and what problems it's solving, um, what a full SASE deployment should look like, and how it relates to things like secure SD-WAN. We'll get to all those topics and much more coming up next. John, how are you today? Not too bad, Phil. Thank you. Thanks for being with us. Do appreciate it. And we are talking about um, two things, the Secure Access Edge, and then a little bit later, we'll talk about SD-WAN. But um, first, let's talk about uh, my favorite new acronym, SASE. Um, it's the, that's the acronym for the Secure Access Edge. So what is a Secure Access Edge uh, SASE, and what problems are people uh, trying to solve with this? Yeah, well, uh, all industries seem to like acronyms, and the latest for <laughs> cybersecurity is SASE, or Secure Access Services Edge. It actually comes from Gartner. And uh, basically what it's saying is that, uh, well, two things. Uh, the first thing is that uh, networking or wide area networking and security are starting to converge. And in fact, Fortinet as a company have had this vision since the founding of the company in 2000, where we feel like uh, networking and security should come together rather than be separate planes. Now, we've been using um, appliances and accelerated appliances using ASICs to do that, uh, because once you load more functionality onto these things, then they tend to slow down a lot. And so we've been driving something called security-driven networking, that is convergence of networking and security uh, via appliances, Probably about five or six years ago, we started to do that through virtual machines as well. And then most recently, we've done that uh, through an acquisition of opaque networks with the cloud as well. So now we can deliver that convergence, network security convergence, uh, either on an appliance, virtual machine, or cloud. But this convergence of security and networking is happening all over the place. If you look inside Endpoint, mm -hmm. for example, where you've got zero trust and remote access, EPP and EDR coming together. So... I think we see the, the networking infrastructure and security teams working much more closely uh, because of this convergence. The second component of SASE is more of a framework or a platform. If you look at the definition of SASE, it includes both SD-WAN, Zero Trust, uh, Firewall as a Service, CASB, WAF, Managed Endpoint. And uh, this is definitely the concept that we call a platform or fabric where instead of implementing just a point solution, you implement a platform which sits across multiple parts of the network, uh, protects multiple attack vectors. And so SASE's two basic definitions are convergence and platform. Okay, so thanks for clearing that up. So it so SD-WAN then in, is actually just a component of SASE in, in the overall uh, scheme of things. Um, what What's required to sort of, do a full SASE deployment or pl or platform deployment like like you were uh, like you were saying is it, do you have to have all of those parts to have a a fully secure uh, edge? I don't think I see any customers implementing all of those things all at once, uh, and they already have some of those components, but maybe through different partners and different vendors. Mm -hmm. uh, I see the core the core SASE implementations really looking at the edges, uh, more importantly the WAN edge. And the cloud edge, you know, as more applications, as more users have moved off network, as more applications have moved from traditional data center to cloud, uh, then uh, customers are wanting to implement the, a cloud edge. Now, a very important part of that is the WAN edge. And so right. what we're seeing is that the fundamental core component that people look at first is the WAN edge or SD-WAN. Uh, they then start to look at how they can implement that cloud edge, uh, whether that be firewall as a service or whether that be zero trust network access. And then they start to look at other things. I'm going to look back into the LAN protection. I'm going to look at data center protection. So I would say, yes, there's 10 to 12 different components, uh, but the core components are really SD-WAN, firewall as a service, and zero trust network access. Okay. And um, how does secure SD-WAN fit into the SASE strategy overall? Well, that, it comes back to that convergence of security and networking. Uh, 
Mm-hmm. And if you go back, you know, five or six years again, really the, the wide area network was built on MPLS that had a hub and spoke architecture. It, it brought everything from every branch and campus back to the data center, and that's where you would apply the security. Well, when you started to send applications or route applications uh, not through the data center, straight into the cloud, then you were traveling over the internet, and all of a sudden you needed security at the one edge. And so uh, the implementation of the best one edge these days is to make sure, obviously, you have that application steering, application control, high availability, the ability to choose different transport to be the most cost effective, but you also need to add that security on site there. And so uh, we have two implementations. One's where we do a, a what we call a thick edge, where we have the full security stack sitting in the one edge uh, all the way from next gen firewall. Uh, or we can do a thin edge where we just apply parts of the security stack to protect the uh, LAM, for example, and then we apply other security components in the cloud or the cloud edge uh, through what we call our, our, our 40 SASE capability. So I think mm-hmm. in the end, customers will be uh, implementing the hybrid networks and they'll move applications and everything around. And mm-hmm. I think what they want to be able to do is apply security anywhere, anytime. Uh, and so the ability to apply security Uh, in an appliance or in a virtual machine or cloud is very important going forward. Okay. So now that we have kind of a bigger picture uh, look at what the secure access edge is, I do want to drill down a little bit into SD-WAN because that's such a hot topic, Um, especially now because the environment that people are working in during a pandemic has changed. And I'm not so sure that when people go back to work or when things become more safe, you know, in terms of returning to offices, it seems like there's still going to be a pretty high percentage of people that um, will work in in multiple remote places. It seems like SD WAN is going to be a more uh, def- more of a de facto uh, uh, solution for the enterprise uh, f- uh, for the you know for enterprise networking. Um, over, overall, it, from from Fortinet's point of view, what what problem is uh, is SD WAN solving, um, and 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 what what does it offer to uh, service providers? Yeah, I think, you know, when um, the current situation, the COVID-19 started, uh, we had a lot of customers immediately have to go from 10% of their workforce remote to 100%. And, you know, our systems could cope with that. Uh, and then I think it, the kind of realization in the last month or last few weeks is this is not going back to normal anytime soon. And so you're going to have to have this network set up um, we feel SD WAN technology is very important, not just for a branch office. Uh, for example, I'm broadcasting today on my home SD WAN, where I've got two ISP connections: one from Comcast, one from AT and T. Mm. In the three months I've been in my home office, I've had zero downtime, and I'm not saying that's going to be the norm. Um, but SD WAN technology can be used in the home edge at the home. It can be used in the branch. It can be used in the campus. It can connect data centers to the cloud. Uh, we recently announced uh, connecting clouds to clouds. So don't think of SD-WAN as a very branch office specific technology. It's technology that will help you steer applications or you steer users and devices to the right applications wherever they may be. And we think the home is going to be part of that going forward. And so we've spoken to yeah. quite a lot of enterprise customers who have decided for a certain percentage of their home users, whether they be the executive suite, power users, developers, they're actually going to implement uh, mini SD WAN capability there, uh, as well as their branch and their data center. And so, again, that's why we implemented it in our products across all our products, um, mm-hmm. such that uh, customers could implement it wherever they wanted to implement it, uh, because it's just key technology as they change their networks going forward. Yeah, and it's and it's far more than just a you know a, a bandwidth saver or a branch office solution like you like you said, and and that that is definitely how it started out was sort of saving money over MPLS and that sort of thing. But now it's so much um, has a lot more functionality. Um, let, let's talk a little bit about that. So when when a um, when a service provider is looking for an SD WAN solution, what essential function should they be fixated on, or should they be looking at? Yeah, well, we see the SD-WAN marketplace. There's, there's obviously uh, enterprises who buy their solutions. There's the uh, service providers who are implementing solutions. There's also a small percentage who do SASE uh, or a SAS implementation of that. Um, for service providers, it's very important that, that it fits inside their network, that it provides all the functionality. Obviously, scale is very important. So 
You know, we beat a, we build a distributed control plane as well as an orchestration control plane. You know, some of our customers have tens of thousands of sites uh, on mm-hmm. a global basis. Right. So the scale is super important. Obviously, the functionality, the core functionality to allow the quality of the applications, whether that be voice, whether that be just an application in the cloud, uh, whether it be an application going to the data center, being able to do that. And then the long-term vision for us is more around the cloud on-ramp. That is, can I take advantage of some of the cloud backbones through Transit Gateway from AWS or VWAN from Azure? And then can I connect to some clouds and get better information? Then as you go forward from there, what we see is more of a vision around AI-driven network operations where you're building intelligence from uh, the events and logging across the entire SD-WAN solution set that you can predict what's going on in the network. You can automatically change things without everyone, human intervention. And this gives you this quality of service across the SD-WAN for all the applications. Because what it's all about in the end is the user experience. Are they getting a good experience uh, with whatever application that they're trying to get to? Right. And and part of that, especially in the enterprise context, is making sure that that, that experience is is completely secure, but not at the expense of the application or um, or the throughput or, you know, or the user experience uh, uh, um, in any way. Um, uh, speaking of, you know, when, when we're talking about securing SD-WAN connections, I, I know secure SD-WAN is actually a thing, or at least that's a, that's a kind of a, a a differentiator, a product category. How, how do how do you differentiate between you know secure SD WAN and what we'd say normal SD WAN? Well, I think if you again, what's happened is SD WAN vendors have implemented. They come from the networking heritage background, so they've implemented what they think is the best networking solution. Then you had security vendors who had built security, but then started to want to build some of the SD WAN components, and so for us. Um, it made the most sense to build it inside our next-gen firewall such that you had both enterprise SD-WAN and then also enterprise security. However, I think going, and what you've seen is that comp- companies have come together and have been acquired and consolidated. So the days of a point solution um, are, are kind of gone in our minds in that a secure mm-hmm. SD-WAN includes a, an enterprise security stack, an enterprise SD WAN, but it's going to be even bigger than that going forward. Let's say, for example, you want to apply some SASE security that's connected to the same orchestration system, or you want to provide some Wi Fi security as you onboard, like an SD branch type solution. So, again, the days of just a point networking solution or a point uh, security solution just being tried, you're trying to glue it together are gone. Customers are looking for a solution set that covers the, all the edges the WAN edge, the LAN edge. Uh, the cloud edge and the data center edge. And so uh, that's the kind of vision that we have, and that's what we're implementing right now. So it's a real, um, I mean, it really is the the term uh, security as a service kind of completely realized, I guess. So it's it's not just, it, it, you know, a lot of times people say that if they're just hosting a particular security application, but from what it sounds like, Fortinet's really striving to provide all of these service components wherever the customer needs them in such a way that they're not, you know, having to re-architect their networks just to just to accommodate, you know, a, like you said, a point solution. Yeah, well, I think customers, they're driving even faster now towards the digital transformation, digital mm-hmm. innovation. And so they need to get there as quickly as possible. And if they're having to implement a point solution for networking, a point solution for security, try and make them work together, and then in different parts of the network, it just takes too long. They need a solution that's delivered as a convert solution, a platform solution where they can implement it really quickly because things will change really quickly as they already know. And so, you know, again, if you look at this unfortunate circumstance right now, definitely the companies who had built out their digital networks were able to respond much more quickly. Yeah, definitely. So it's been pretty impressive too, you know, in general to see how quickly companies adapted. Because like you said, they, they, it it was no trivial thing to go from, you know, like maybe a a 95-5 split for people in the office versus people on the road. And then suddenly 100% at home. That was, it's pretty remarkable. Um, So where do you uh, see the, the, I guess, what what do you think is the vision for where the secure access service edge is going to go next? Like, where where do you see this going in the next uh, little bit? And, and I'll allow for um, 
some amount of, uh, of, I won't try to pin you down on timelines just because of, of the, <laughs> the current situation that we're in, but in general, where, where do you see the technology trending? Well, I think we talked a bit about the convergence that will continue. Uh, we talked a bit about it being more of a platform solution, not a point solution that will continue. And then I think the key driver will be the uh, AI driver of the both the security component and the network operations. So from a security perspective, it's much more focused on detection and response. Protection mm-hmm. is still needed because of the volume of threats that come. Uh, but the zero-day attacks, uh, targeted attacks, you're going to need more of an AI-driven detection and response capability. Then on the on the network side, as you start to converge these networks, you really don't have the right number of people or skill sets. So you're going to need AI-driven kind of operations to predict capability and performance, to change things automatically. Uh, and those things, you know, they don't just arrive tomorrow. Those are things which will grow as you kind of develop the overall platform. But the AI-driven security and uh, network operations is really important. And that provides you one really important component, which is the automation, whether it be automatically adding users in, uh, automatically configuring the system end-to-end, automatically responding very quickly to mitigate a threat where you can take users off the network or divert their access to data center. Mm -hmm. So the fundamental pieces are going to be put in place. And then long-term, this AI-driven operations and security uh, will provide a lot of benefits to enterprises. Sounds great. Okay. Well, John Madison, thank you so much for being part of our Executive Spotlight Q&A. Thank you, Phil. That is it. That's our show. Thanks very much to my guest, John Madison, for his time and insights today. Thanks to our producer, Pierre Landrio, for his fine work on this production. As noted before, this is a sponsored audio production, and the Executive Spotlight does not necessarily reflect the views of Light Reading's editorial staff, although sometimes it does. To schedule your own Spotlight Q&A, please contact the Light Reading sales team. The email address for that group is sales at lightreading.com. Thanks for listening.